I like the sense of perspective that the path gives us as well as this shadow overhanging here. And then I love also like these trees that lead the eye in with the shadows and I just like being able to have these shadows here plus the highlights over it. And then I also really like this uh, fence line here. I have uh, my sketchbook here primed with casein just to tone it. Because I have toned it with this casein, it's gonna force me to go in with strong opaques right away. So I'm gonna lay in the sky. And that's kind of the beauty um, of using an underpainting. As uh, I talked in one of my previous videos on underpaintings that you can watch here, this is definitely one of the uh, nice facets of having an underpainting is it forces you to cover up this color because obviously this is a pretty unnatural uh, color that we don't have in the landscape um, but that's going to force me to really think hard about my tonal values and uh, to cover it up and then I also think because it's a complementary color to uh, so much green in this scene that um, little pockets of red will peek through and hopefully just enliven the green color a little bit more and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my shadows because I want to get a really strong sense of three-dimensionality so that I can get, kind of carve out the light. I'm looking at the tree here and I'm thinking of it in terms of uh, maybe two or three values for the whole picture. The sky is brightest, the ground is second brightest, and then the vertical planes are where uh, our shadows will be. Now because uh, this portion of the road here is a little bit farther back, I'm going to uh, lighten it a little bit. So it's not quite as dark. I'm gonna mix up a lightish green that's mixed with some white. And by doing that, uh, I'm gonna kind of push the distance in the atmospheric perspective. Because the value is not as dark, it will feel like it's receding into the background. And we'll come in and we'll refine this a little bit later. But I want it to feel like it's farther away. So there's a little bit more blue, a little bit more white. And as things come towards us in the picture, we will uh, get more saturated. I'm mixing up a very light green. This is using cadmium yellow ultramarine blue and some white and this is going to be our ground plane as i said other than the sky everything that is on the ground plane or facing on a horizontal facing upward that is going to be our next brightest we also have to consider the surface of the pavement it's going to be a little bit brighter because there's some reflectivity there use just the corner of my brush to kind of go around these shadows create that sense of 3d and any lines or mess that we create we can clean it up later that's the beauty of gouache it's almost dry right away so i can go over the top like so and you know it's not picking up and that's also the beauty of the casein underpainting it won't pick up with gouache gotten all the big shapes laid in and everything is kind of covered and so now I'm going to go in and refine particularly by going over my shadows with highlights. Now as I mix these highlights I'm cognizant of the fact that I still don't necessarily want them to be too much brighter than the ground. The ground plane needs to be the brightest after the sky. However the leaves on the trees that catch light are facing upward it's kind of a delicate balance i'm kind of just trying to capture like those main shapes and then i might go over it again with even more with even more highlight <laughs> and you know even as i do this i kind of modulate my mixes a little bit and i'm trying to keep a fairly dry brush follow the direction of the tree leaves mixing in just a little bit more red for this tree that's behind in to desaturate that green just to have it kind of feel like it's behind it same for this one a little bit more white white will also desaturate a mix so if you're trying to you know get a sense of one tree one thing is in front of another is in front of another desaturating your colors can really help as well as lightening the color a little okay i'm going to come in with this round brush and i'm mixing up a color that is a lot lighter to be the highlights on top of the highlights. And the more that you can kind of modulate your depth like this, the more that you'll get a nice 3D effect. I try to observe the shapes of the trees and the directions that the leaves go. Really those highlights are quite 
orangey. So a lot of times we don't think of that as being in a tree, a green tree, but it's there if you look for it. You might be noticing too as you watch this that some of these colors that I'm putting down like over here are already drier and that makes them a little bit darker. And that's one of the qualities of gouache that takes some getting used to. One thing that you can do if you want to get more texture is to kind of dry off the brush so that there's not a lot of wet pigment on it. And then when you go in here in the background, we're going to see a lot less detail. And you just kind of lightly brush and kind of scumble those highlights on. And instead of having to paint every tree leaf, you can kind of get the illusion of texture, which saves a lot of time. A lot of times it looks a lot better. Nice. Thank you. That is very nice. Still working on it. We'll see if we can, huh? I said, we'll see if we can get some of these trees in the background, a little bit more detail, but I'm liking where it's headed. That is really nice. Thank you. You've been painting? Been out here maybe an hour, wow, that is give or take. And I like, uh, I paint all over Omaha and... Do you really? Yeah. You're very good. Well, thank you. How many years have you been doing that since you were a kid? No, I was actually, I kind of was raised uh, as a musician. Studied music in college and everything. And I got out of school and I kind of needed something else. I right. was kind of burned out on that. And mm -hmm. I just started doing this maybe three or four years ago now. You are and very, very, you're very talented. Thank you. I could sit down there and try it. I, it wouldn't look nothing like Well, that. mine at the beginning didn't look too good either, but I just enjoy it. You know, yeah. even even if it's a flop, you know, not they don't all turn out. Sometimes you do them and it just sucks, but it's... But you are really detailed. I mean, this is, it looks just like you're looking out there. Well, thank you. It does. It's very, very good. But, you know, like I was saying, even if it flops, I still get to spend time outside and you get to look at nature and so I always find there's always something to learn you know and I enjoy that Wow see if I can do it without tearing and here's the finished piece I really like the texture I got on this tree I like the composition and uh, I even like the little patches and kisses of red that pop out from underneath. You can see some red here and there, and I think it just enlivens the image overall. Remember, you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.